Okay. So let's just think of, for a little bit of what we have learned so far, okay? We have learned <coughs> about quadratic equations. In particular, we're talking about quadratic equations. Today, we're going to be talking about that in real life situations, okay? Um, up to this point, you have learned the standard formula for a quadratic equation, which is y equals. Seven. No. AX squared plus BX plus C. So you guys all know that backwards and forwards. You're totally comfortable with it. You know how to use it to, 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 you know, to identify the A, B, and C for the quadratic formula. You know how to basically find... What are you finding when you use the quadratic formula? X. You're finding X, which is what? Uh, it's part of, it's part of your... your Right, well, okay, yeah. Where it hits the x line. It's the, yeah, it's where, right, so what do you call that, where it hits the x line? Oh, x what? X intercepts, right? So you're finding the zeros, right? You're finding the roots. Those are all the same thing. Zeros are the x intercepts. Roots are the x intercepts. If I said find the roots, I'd be saying find the x intercepts, right? If I said solve, give, find a solution to this quadratic equation. I would be asking you to find the x-intercepts, finding the zeros, finding the roots, okay? Is that clear? It's all the same thing, right? So, um, um, and, and how did we do it? How did we find the zeros? What is the basic process? We had a few possibilities. What's one, pro what's the first way I taught you to find zeros? You have an equation, you have a quadratic equation, it has, says equal to zero, right? because you're making y equal to zero. So you're gonna solve for x when y equals zero, right? And what do you first try to do? First thing you always try to do. Factor. Try to factor it, right? You try to factor it. You immediately put two sets of parentheses. Well, actually, you might first see if there's a, if, if there's a greatest common factor that you could factor out. If it was four x squared plus 16 x plus 12 equals zero, you could divide by four, everything by four. Then you'd factor it, right? You try to factor it. You put your two sets of parentheses, try to factor it. That's the easiest way, always, if it's possible. Okay, after 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds, if you cannot factor it, Serena, what's the next thing you would do if you can't factor it after Gary's 30 to 60 seconds? Um, Gary's terrific trick um, is possible. You could use Gary's terrific trick. What? You could use completing the square, all right, or the quadratic formula. Those are all things. You have all these tools in your tool belt that you can use to find the x-intercepts. Yes, what did you say? Or you can convert it to vertex form as well, correct. Um, the vertex form, converting it to ver vertex form is more for finding the vertex, you know what I mean? Because it's got a real... You know, it has the vertex right within it, so you can quickly see the vertex. Um, so today, though, we're going to, right now, all that stuff is gobbledygook. You totally, you get it. You know what it is, but the truth is, you don't. You have no idea how to use this in real life at this point in time. Maybe you do. Maybe some of you do. But most of you don't. So we're, now we're going to talk about a real life experience. Before we do that, we got to talk about a, a formula which is called the vertical motion model, okay? Um, one of the things about math that I find fascinating, especially when I think about people like Einstein and other great scientists, right, that have this ability to create, they look at the real world, and they have this ability to create a mathematical model that illustrates what's really happening in the real world. I mean, that's pretty exciting. I mean, like that, 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 you know, they can mathematically figure out, you know, um, lots of different things just because they have figured out the laws of physics and the laws of, you know, the, of nature, basically, right? And so this is going to be a model that you're going to see that is very, very popular. It's an extremely important um, formula. But before I write it, I'm going to write the standard form of a quadratic equation because I don't want us to get lost on what's going on here. So it is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so I want you to make sure you write your notes down really well today. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble doing the homework. 
Okay. Now I'm going to write the vertical motion model. Okay. It is H equals negative 16 t squared plus v t plus s. So write that down. That is an S, not a 5. I try to write it so obviously an S because I hate, I hate S's because they look like 5's. But that one doesn't, fortunately. Right? You all see? All right, so now we've got to talk about this for a second because we swap things around a little bit. We've got, instead of Y's, we have what? H. H. And we, instead of X, we have what? D. All right, so if we drew a coordinate plane, like this. This is no longer my y up here. This is now what? H. My h axis. And what is this? T. My t axis. T axis. My t axis, right? Um, all right, so not a big deal. Not a big difference. Now what we have to do, though, is start to understand what do all these letters represent, right? Because we're going to use them in a real life situation. So the first thing we're going to look at is h. Um, H. So this is our legend. This tells us basically um, what these stand for. H stands for the height. Somebody's singing, but at, at any given time, whoops, at any given time. Okay? That's what H stands for. So I have this ball. And I'm going to throw it in the air, right? At any given time, I want to know the height of that ball, right? That means I could say, I want to know the height right now, right? Or I could say, I want to know the height right now, right? Depends on any, there's this arc that it's making. It's a making a parabola. And I may ask, what is the height at any given point? You can find that using these formulas, okay? So that's basically, that's what the height is, okay? And so that means, that means that this here is going to be, this, the, the, the y-axis is now the h-axis. It's representing how high something is, okay? How high a ball travels or how high I jump in the air. Okay, um, the second one, let's see, we'll just use T, we'll do T. T stands for the time in seconds the object has been in the air. Okay, the time in seconds the object has been in the air. All right, that makes sense, right? So over here, this represents height. So we know our graph, when we graph something, we're going to have height here. And we know our t is the amount of time that it's been in the air. So this is going to represent time going this way, right? <clears throat> All right. V. V is interesting. V stands for the initial vertical velocity in feet per second. Say that 15 times fast. The <laughs> initial, <laughs> that's a good, initial, initial vertical velocity in feet per second. The initial <laughs> Thank you, Sal. Vertical. <laughs> The initial vertical velocity in feet per second. Okay. okay. 
Okay, you got that? I'm sorry. I'm your way <sighs> so let's talk about that for a second. I'm here right now. That's just true. And I jump up. Oh my gosh. Right? There is an initial. That was amazing. Right? Amazing jump. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, right. That was an amazing jump, right? But when I left the ground, there was actually a velocity, a vertical velocity that was occurring. And at first, whatever that is, that's my initial. Right when I leave the ground, that's my initial vertical velocity. Now, does it stay? That, does that, is that velocity constant? No. No, no why? Because of gravity. And because of gravity, gravity. right? Oh, gravity. After a while, I'm going to get up there, and what's going to happen eventually? Gravity. I'm going to stop, right? I'm going to stop in midair, and then what's going to happen? Fall. I'm going to fall. And it's because of gravity, right? Did you want to jump? Oh, okay. I thought you were coming up there. Don't anybody look over there, okay? Oh, no. All right. So initial vertical, vertical velocity. Velocity is something that's changing, right? Does that make sense? It's changing. So if, if I didn't say initial and I just said vertical velocity, that would be a nightmare, right? Because I don't know. It could be different at any given point. So it's important that I know what the initial, the beginning vertical velocity is, OK? Now, I can jump straight up in the air. Or I could jump out this way, right? Right out, right out of the video, right? I could go way out this way. Now, even though I'm traveling horizontally, I'm also going vertically, right? So I'm measuring, even though I'm going horizontally, I'm only measuring with vertical velocity the amount of change that's happening as I'm going upwards. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. I'm going sideways, but I'm really going upwards. So I'm really going from here to here, right? Even though I jumped over here. Does that make sense? Yes. Are we Maybe. doing y equals x squared? I mean, x squared x squared. Uh, no. No. Do it. Indy no. will catch you. No. No, it's just going to be. It's going to be. will catch you. We're, yeah. Oh, no. oh, I see what you're saying. I get it now because of the, because of the shape. Oh. Um, no. No. We're still doing y. No, no, no. We are actually doing a parabola. So we're doing y is equal to x squared. But. You know, sometimes the parabola might be very, very long and low, right? And sometimes it might be like this, but uh, it's going to be a problem. So it's always a sad face? Yeah, well, now why would it be a sad face with this formula? Because you're jumping up. It's negative 16, right? Oh. Negative 16 t squared. Negative, you know, whenever we're negative, doggone it. You know, it's a pra sad face. <laughs> very sad face. <laughs> But every time, you know, you know, it makes sense though, because every time I have thrown a ball, every time, I'm not say, saying it will always be the case, but every time I have thrown a ball up in the air, it has always come back down again. It's always created a negative parabola. What if right? you threw a balloon? Yeah, that's okay. You may leave. <laughs> okay, that's all I need is right now. Okay, the last one. What was, what's our last one? S. Ooh, S. What about negative 16? S. That is not a 5. S. Okay, S. S stands for the initial height in feet. The initial initial height height in feet. Alright? Now, when I think of this though, because the letter is S, the way I think of it is this. The starting height, right? The starting so it's like, it's like, height. It's like when you threw the ball, it would be like where you're you know, right. playing the ball. Right. If I was playing soccer, right, the ball's on the ground, and I'm going to kick it, and I create this beautiful parabola. What is the starting height? <laughs> what is the starting height? Zero, Zero right? Because it's not up, it's on the ground. It would be a perfect parabola. Like what? No matter what, like no matter what ball what is going up would always be perfect. Yeah. No, yeah. no, but if we had a ball that was like this, it was all work. Oh, wow. Thank you, like Sal. <laughs> I, forgot about this. I forget, there are these kind of balls that go. <laughs> like balloons if you let the air out. Yeah. Okay. Really, I, I really I'm noticing a theme. Go, like, right now. <laughs> all right. So, so, but if, if I stand on this thing, right? Oh. And, and I throw this ball as high as I can, 
what is the initial starting height? Wherever your hand is. Wherever I let go, right? That's my starting height. So whatever that height is, is your S. So Gary. Right? Can you see that? <laughs> right? That, that thing right there. That's whatever your starting height is. If I am a, what do you call it? Acapulco. Am I, I'm an Acapulco and I, I've got this amazing suit on and you guys see my massive pecs and, and you know, biceps, right? And I dive off and make this amazing swan dive and then in the middle of the swan dive I spin around and I do like these amazing flips and all sorts of things and then I do a half twist and I land in the water. My starting height was before when I was on the cliff. Whatever that height was, that's my S, right? I'm sorry, I got excited about my, my, brief, my brief fame to glory. Um, claim to glory, whatever. Okay, so, so, um, so let's think about this just for one second, okay? You will sometimes see this written differently because this is specifically feet per second. If you saw this in meters per second, you would have to convert this negative 16 to a meters, right? To meters. So you'd use conversion property and figure out that. Sometimes you'll see it in that format. And then it would be meters per second, right? Time is always in seconds with this, with this formula. Um, when it's negative 16 t squared, it is in feet per second, okay? So, and the, the initial starting height is feet as well. We have to keep our units the same. We can't have feet here and meters here and miles and kilometers and, you know, seconds and hours. We have to have just feet and seconds. Is that clear? Well, it should be a country that uses a different measurement of time. Well, then you can convert to that measurement of time. That's fine. You can say, well, we maybe, so you know. Stupid. You know, what? The U.S. is so stupid. Why they not convert? Okay. Okay. All right. So we have ten. Oh, we have twenty. Sorry. Minutes. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. This is like NTU at base. Well, we all know what your face looks like. And I absolutely no, but okay. the U.S. government doesn't. Serena, Georgia. Okay. So. <laughs> Serena, okay. okay. Guys, this is a video. This is a videotape, right? So we gotta kind of. Yeah. Into and Clayton. All right. <laughs> Clear, clearly, the thought of me in a bathing suit was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Gary, think about it. Sorry. Monday. I just can't. I, I, ah, I did that on a video. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, okay. So, guys. <laughs> so, Manus goes like this. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, you know what? Let's just move right into the problem, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, so can Stop I erase it up. this? Stop it up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Stop it up for Gary. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, Gary, next time you're in a cliff jumping competition, can you invite us? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, invite us. I would love okay. to see that happen. There's, really a, there's a problem. <laughs> oh, no. I'd love so write, your, write this problem on the board. It's okay. I'm gonna read it out loud as I write it, so you can write. A startled. Oh dear. Now, granted. Armadillo. Yes. How really? did you know? I don't know. You're right. Basically. Because they crawl and turn into a box. You know, I'm. You know, they're kind of puny. Um, word problems, right? I mean, they're not like, like things necessarily that you'd really, really wonder in real life. But it's a great way to begin to learn how to do these things. So we have a startled armadillo. I love armadillos. I, I do too. Armadillo. Arma. 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 Okay. I started. So let's have it quiet. Let's have it quiet so I can read it and you can write while I read. A startled armadillo jumps straight into the air. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Ah, into the air here. Straight up into the air. Straight up into the air. <laughs> with <laughs> an initial vertical velocity. <laughs> an initial vertical velocity measured by his father. <laughs> what? Never mind. Oh. <laughs> 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 
plus. I mean, armadillos are, are known for measuring initial vertical velocity. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. Like um, initial vertical velocity of 14 feet per second. Per yes. second. Oh, no. Okay. Now the question is, after how many seconds does it land on the ground? That's really weird. Two. Fourteen feet per second? Yes. <laughs> That's pretty fast. <epic. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing armadillo. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I know, I was, trying to, I was trying to picture that, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of our medillas as kind of moving slowly, but all of a sudden. Like a little? You mean like you know. a really, really fast one? Well, the little one just like. Oh, small. that's so scary. Okay. All right. So let's read this. Let, let's read this out loud. A startled, startled armadillo jumps straight into the air. Right? Straight in the air with an initial vertical velocity of 14 feet per second. After how many seconds does it land on the ground? Three. Wait, is the negative 16 part of the, shouldn't that be a question? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a question mark, isn't it? Sorry. Oh, no. That is a question mark. <laughs> so we should okay. plug this into our... So, so what are they asking? The time for, um, T. They're asking for T. Yep. It says, after how many seconds? Would you agree that's time? Yeah. yeah. So they're asking time for T. And when do they want to know T? Which part of T? Because there's T happening. As soon as he jumps in the air, there's T happening. When he lands. When he lands. So, so let's think about this for a second, right? You sort of think, like, would you agree with me? Now, where does he start? Okay, it doesn't really say that, but I think we you can assume, assume that the because he's, so he's jumping oh, straight up in the air. It's like a black hole opens under him. Thank you, Clayton. It's forever. Okay. That's totally okay. going to happen. Okay. He's jumping straight in the air, and he's coming straight back down, and he's landing on the ground. So I think we could pretty safely say he started from the ground. I mean... The likelihood, the, the likelihood of his best friend, he's jumping off a chair and his best friend moves the chair and he lands on the ground. Probably not likely, right? Not with an armadillo. With Clayton, it would be like <laughs> with an armadillo, right? So probably initial starting height is zero. I would agree with that, right? Everybody agrees with that. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing we do is we write this formula exactly as a formula, okay? Oh, We're no. just gonna write it. We're gonna write it right here, H, is equal to negative 16 t squared plus vt plus s. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, what did they give us? What can I plug into this equation? V. All right. Um, Karen. Well, we know, we, we, we're assuming it's parked on the ground. Okay, so what should, what would that be? That would be S. Okay, so you're saying zero. S is zero. zero. Okay. And then V would be 14. <coughs> v would be 14, right? Because it says initial vertical velocity of 14. So this is really a piece of cake. All you do is just plug in the stuff they gave you. 16T squared plus 14T and then plus zero. I'm not going to even bother writing it because it's nothing. Right? Plus zero. Because my S now is just zero. Right? Now, what height? Okay, notice we have a height here, H, yeah. right? What height are they asking us to find? Height. They're not really. Look at the last question. Last question. After how many seconds does it land? They're not asking us to find H. Sorry. Yeah. Right. But, but what is the height? Sorry. But what is the height? When with Fort Fort say it again. How height went to the Fort Bell? That is that. That's well. Uh, let's look at this last question. After how many seconds does it land on the 
ground. They're asking us by so seconds. What is, how high, how high but what is the height when, zero, when we're supposed to find when it lands on the ground? When it lands on the ground. So zero. what is that height? Zero. 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 All right. So you guys agree with me that I can replace h with a zero, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what they're asking. When it lands on the ground again, I want to know the time. So I want to know the time when h is zero. What is the sounding like? Quadratic. Well, well finding the all of these. Finding the zeros. Zeros, right? That's finding the zeros. That's what they're asking. Look, after how many seconds does it land on the ground? We've got a parabola, and they're wanting us to figure out, find the zero. Because that's what you're finding when you're finding the zero. You're finding the time it took, in this case, right, in this particular problem. So let's think about this for a second. Would you guys agree with me that at the beginning, time was zero? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Would you agree? That makes sense, right? Time was, time was zero. zero. That's right before he jumped. Time was zero. So he started at zero, zero, right? His height was zero. He hasn't left the ground yet. His height is zero. His time is zero because he hasn't left the ground yet, right? Time hasn't started yet, right? Now, he jumps straight into the air, right? Straight in the air. Now, you sort of think... You sort of think that when you graph this, he jumps straight in the air, right? You think you go straight up and straight down, right? No. Wouldn't you think that when you're graphing it? No. The only trouble is there is one other element. There's time. As soon as he jumps in the air, the click, the click starts timing. The time starts clicking, right? <laughs> ticking. <laughs> Whatever. The time starts ticking, right? So the time is starting to move. So. I feel like we should go get a stopwatch. So I jump, so let's say, let's say it's me. I jump up in the air, right? Let's say I, I did three feet in the air. Did you see that? Three Whoa. feet, right? That was amazing. I got three feet. Now, you think that I just go up to three feet here. One, two, three. But no, because by the time I got up here, the time had already moved, right? Maybe a half second or so. So at a half second, I was at three feet, say. So here is where I was at three feet. And then if I kept going, I might be at, you know, I might be here, and then I might be back going back down again. So I might be creating a parabola, right? Even though, so does that make sense though? Even though I'm going straight up and straight down, in relation to time, I'm creating this parabola, right? Make sense? Fist to five, you get it? Gary, so you're trying to tell me that time started when an armadillo, a certain armadillo jumped? That is actually the history of the world. Yeah. Mm. Time started as soon as the armadillo jumped. Okay. There's an armadillo in the Okay. Now. So, okay, let's focus because I'm running out of time here. I want to be sure to finish this. So, we all agree that I'm trying to find how many seconds for it lands on the ground. In other words, when the height is zero. So, I'm going to change that height to zero. Zero is equal to negative 16. T squared plus 14T. Okay, now how do I solve it? What do you always have to do? Try. What's the first thing you always try? Try to factor it. Okay, how could I factor this? Take negative 14 and 2. Take 2S. All right, so would you guys both agree that 2 goes into both of these? Yes. I could take a 2 out. What else could I take out? Um, four. four. No. A T. A T, right? A T. Right? Mike, I'm looking. What are, what are we doing? We're looking for. What are we looking for? The greatest common factor. The greatest common factor, right? So we're saying the greatest common factor of the numbers is 2. So I'm going to say 0 is equal to 2, and the greatest common factor of the variables is T. T, parenthesis. I'm going to factor that out. So negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. T. And then we have still have a t. t squared divided by t is t. Plus 7. Plus 7. Negative 7 or negative 1. Okay. All right. Now remember that little rule. If a, I'm going to even write it down. Can you see this? If a times b equals 0. If a times b equals 0, then either... A equals zero or B equals zero, right? All right. So where's my A in this? Two um, T. Two T is my A. Does that make sense? Do you guys yeah. see that? Yeah. Two T is my A, and what's my B? Oh, That's my B. So that means that either two T equals zero or 
negative 8t plus 7 equals 0. So now I solve this very, these two simple equations for 0. I mean for t, sorry. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I see that t is equal to 0. And then I've got an or. Here I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And I've got negative 8t equals negative 7. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8 because I want to know what t is. So t is equal to the negative over negative becomes a positive, right? So it just equals 7 eighths of what? A second. A second. OK, so these are my two answers. <coughs> A lot of times with quadratics, you'll get two answers. Sometimes you'll get one answer, and sometimes you'll get no, no answers. Answer. That was the discriminant we worked on yesterday, right? Yeah. Either you have parabolas where they hit the x-axis twice, or you might have a parabola where it just nicks the x-axis and turns around again, right? That would be one, one solution, right? Or you might have an, a parabola where it never even crosses the x-axis. That would be, and you would know that if the, inside the square root sign, you'd have a negative number, remember? It's like the discriminant. We talked about that yesterday. Right? So, but we don't have those situations today. That's very cool. So now let's look at what we've got. We have, this is our solution. We have t equals 0 and t equals 7 eighths of a second. Now, you can't have two answers. In real life situations, zero exist. yeah. Which which is to which can you rule out? Zero. zero. Right, because the question is: is after how many seconds does it land on the ground? Well, that means he has to have jumped, right? He hasn't jumped yet at t equals zero, right? So this is implying that he's jumped. All right, great. So the next one, it's got to be greater than zero. It's got to be seven eighths of a second. Right? Yeah. So there we go. Um, so we have answered the question. So basically, after 7 eighths of so here's your final answer. After 7 eighths of a second, um, he will land on the ground. Then the dark armadillo jumped. That's when the world began. Right. Now, um, so that's my answer, right? Okay. Wait, so he's jumping 14 feet per second. He's not necessarily jumping 14 feet in the air, though. He's not necessarily going 50, 14 feet in the air, but that's That'd the speed with which he moves. <laughs> I know, all of a sudden you just see it. Right? And one thing like, <laughs> wow! Because right, you know. like, notice, be notice, notice he only, we only, he landed on the oh, ground after oh. 7 eighths of a second. Yeah. So he, one time, I mean, one times 14 would be 14. He, we didn't even make it to ones. We didn't even make it to ones. But remember, that's going to be half. That's that's why. I mean, half of seven eighths will give you where the vertex is. Does that make sense? If if if, if he goes, if he jumps from the ground at zero, and he lands again, Serena. If he jumps from the ground at, at time zero, and he lands at time seven eighths, then. Half of seven eighths is where the vertex is going to be. We already we can figure that out. Does that make sense? Did you get that? Because it's got to be some halfway. Because that's the beauty of a parabola. Parabola is always both and both sides are equidistant to the axis of symmetry. This is my axis of symmetry, right? So I know from here to here is the same as from here to here. That means I know from here to here is twice from here to here, which means I could say half of this would tell me where my vertex is, right? Seven so 7 sixteenths, right? <coughs> One half times 7 eighths would be 7 sixteenths. If I asked you to find the vertex, you would now know how to do it. You would plug 7 sixteenths in for t, and you would use a calculator, right? It wouldn't be that hard to do. It would be pretty easy to do. But that's not what they're asking, so I'm going to just stop with this. This is all they ask. After how many seconds when we answered the question? So fist to five. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right. So most of the problems that I'm going to give you on this assignment, I'm going to give it to you early and let you work on it for five minutes. Um, most of the problems start on the ground, they leave from the ground, but then towards the end, there's a couple problems where they're 96 feet in the air, right, when they leave. So make sure, make sure the S, yeah, acapulco. Okay, so that is, that is it. Any questions? Okay. Let me see.